Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya here with information to keep your family healthy and safe. And today we are talking again about COVID-19, the disease that you get when you catch coronavirus. This is what everybody's talking about right now and it's really affecting our entire country. We have learned a lot over the last week about coronavirus and COVID-19. So I wanted to bring you some of the new, the latest information to help protect your family and then also answer the questions that you guys have been sending in to me. Again, this is Dr. Tanya. Um, please subscribe if you like my channel so I can keep coming to you weekly and bringing you this information to help your family. Also, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Dr. Tanya Altman as this is where you can submit your questions that I will come on every week and answer. And once COVID-19 is hopefully slowing down in the country, please feel free to bring up other topics any well child evergreen topics that you want me to cover because I'm all about information, accurate, up-to-date information to protect you and your family. So what's new with COVID-19? Well, numbers have been dramatically increasing here in the United States, but the good news is that social distancing is making a difference. And the areas that are really being good about this throughout our country, like California, are slowing down in the speed of which we, have in, we are increasing in numbers. So the best advice I have for you today is to continue staying home. Many of you know that I have been promoting hashtag stay home April COVID-19 and I am happy to see now that the president and the administration is on board and urging all Americans to stay home for the month of April as that is the best way to keep yourself and your family from catching coronavirus. Other new things that have been um, coming out is we have more um, clinical trials going on helping with medications and we should have more information in the next few weeks on that. Vaccine progression is really moving quite rapidly. Scientists all around the world are working together and they hope to start the first clinical vaccine trials in the United States this fall. Um, everyone in communities are pitching together. Grocery stores are helping out to ensure that families can get their groceries in a timely manner without allowing too many people into the store. So that way there isn't risk of you being infected by other shoppers or if you have been exposed, you won't infect the other shoppers as well. The best advice I have right now is for you to act like you have the virus and act like everybody else has the virus. And that will help teach you how to be careful, how not to touch surfaces. Hand washing is really the most powerful tool that you have and make sure that you really wash your hands well for 20 seconds, sing happy birthday twice. Don't forget your thumbs, don't forget your fingernails, don't forget going up to your wrists, and then rinse off and use a paper towel or clean cloth to shut off the water so that way you're not touching another surface. The other thing that's really important to be aware of is how often you touch your face on a regular basis. Um, many people touch their face. Um, I feel like I'm also I'm the face touching police because every time I'm talking to somebody, and this has been going on for years I've done this, and I'm talking to somebody and they rub their nose or itch their eyes, I always say don't touch your face, especially if it's cold or flu season, if you haven't washed your hands, as that is how infections enter your body. So it's something I'd like you all to be aware of now is how often you touch your face and really try not to do that. The other method um, that we're now seeing a little bit more of, but we still don't feel is the main method of transmission of coronavirus is aerosol. So that means that somebody coughs or sneezes or sings or loudly speaks into the air and their droplets fly around. And in clinical testing, the virus can stay in the air for three hours. Now, probably in practicality, when you're outside, when you're walking around, it's not going to last that long. But still, this is the reason why you need to be at least six feet away from other people. Okay, now I'm going to go to your questions. Thank you so much for asking them. The first question here is, oh, very appropriate. Should we wear masks and gloves like in China? And I'm sure that many have, many of you have seen people um, recommending this online. You know, there's a few reasons why the WHO is still saying everybody does not need to wear a mask when they're out and about. And the reason is that masks are still in very short supply. So what masks can help with is if someone is sick, or if someone is caring for somebody who has COVID-19 and they wear a mask, these surgical masks are fine as long as you wear them properly. This will help collect your secretions, your spit, your breath, your germs when you cough and sneeze. 
However, when many people wear masks, they actually touch their face more. And it's something that you can observe just by looking at the people in the grocery store wearing masks. If you're touching your face, if you're adjusting it, that's actually going to do you more harm because it's bringing more germs to your face. Now, if you're the type of person that when you wear a mask, it reminds you not to touch your face, then that's a good reason to wear a mask. But we also don't want to use medical masks unless really needed if you're sick or somebody else is sick because they are in short supply and we really need them for healthcare workers on the front line. This is the other type of mask. This is called an N95 mask. And many of you remember these are the ones that we used during all of the fires we had um, in California last fall because this protects you from inhaling small particles. So this is what doctors wear when they are swabbing somebody, when they're looking in someone's mouth, if they're doing medical procedures because this will help so they don't inhale particles. But this is not something that the average person really needs to be wearing right now when they're at the grocery store and out and about. There are many less expensive masks if you feel like you want to do that so you can save these for our healthcare workers. The other thing I want to talk about is gloves. So gloves can be very helpful. They're not very expensive and a lot of people do have them. They come in all different types. And gloves can be useful for protecting yourself from catching the virus only if you use them properly. If you wear gloves like you do your skin and you still touch cans in the grocery store and then touch your phone and then wipe your eyes or touch your mask or touch your face, that's no different than skin. And you might as well just wash your hands frequently then. But if you carefully put on gloves like a surgeon before you're going somewhere like to the grocery store and you assume that your hands are contaminated and you touch things at the store, but you don't use your hands to touch your phone, to touch your face, to touch your money, to touch a keypad. And when you're done, you very carefully take them off by turning them inside out so the germs stay on the other side and don't get on and then you throw them away in a trash can, now your hands are clean. So that's the proper way that you wear a glove. And still, it's always a good idea to wash your hands when you take them off. Okay, let's go to question number two. Is more testing now available? So it depends where you live in the country, but we are seeing more and more testing becoming available every day and every week. Um, there were some point of service, more rapid tests just released, which will be available in some hospitals and some doctor's offices. There are also more public health testing sites available and more primary care doctors are actually swabbing their patients and sending it to labs like Quest and LabCorp. What the real question is, is who needs to be tested? Now, ideally, if we had an unlimited supply of tests, we would test everybody in this country. I mean, that's how we would know what the exact data is, how many people are infected, how many people are infected but asymptomatic, and you could actually do very accurate contact tracing then to help isolate people and decrease the risk of the disease spreading throughout the community. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that many tests available right now, although hopefully we will soon. So right now we're asking all families, if you have symptoms of COVID-19, if you have a cough, if you have a fever, if you have aches and pains, that you stay home. Many people will still have a mild illness, so it's always a good idea to call your doctor and ask, should you get tested? Reasons that you should be tested are if you are living with someone who is high risk, which means they have underlying heart or lung disease or they're immunocompromised, or they are elderly, let's say over 60 or 65 years of age. Those would be reasons to be tested. If you are a caregiver or someone like that and you have symptoms, that would be another reason for you to be tested. We really want to test people where it will change the management that we are currently doing with that person. And the management for most people is to isolate and stay home unless you're having shortness of breath or trouble breathing or you feel really, really sick where you're worried about your health and your life or you're worried about somebody that you love or that lives in your house. And in that case, you want to call the emergency room, take them there, or even call 911 if it's severe respiratory symptoms that are life-threatening. But call your own doctor because some have more availability for testing. And once we are able to test everyone, ideally, that would be the best thing to do. Next question. Are people with asthma at higher risk for COVID-19? Okay, anyone can catch COVID-19 of any age. Babies, toddlers, kids, adults, elderly, 
and people that are high risk. Now, what's interesting, if you look at everybody in the hospital in the United States, it does not appear that there are more known asthmatics that are getting serious disease and ending up in the hospital or on ventilators or dying. So that is good news. However, everybody is different. And we do know that um, people with a history of lung issues you know, may be more susceptible to serious disease. So what I would do is talk to your own doctor, and many are recommending that asthmatic patients start on their preventive daily medications now to protect their lungs. So that might be an inhaled daily corticosteroid, which helps protect your lungs from getting inflamed and irritated when you do get sick with any viral illness. Number four, I was sick a few weeks ago. Is there a blood test to do to see if I had COVID-19? You know, this is a very common question that I'm hearing. I, too, was really sick about a month ago, and I never get sick. I had a horrible cough, fever, runny nose, aches and pains, chills. I was really sick for about a week and a half, and I was extremely careful to not share my germs with any of my patients. Now, luckily, I tested myself with the BioFire machine, which checks for the most common respiratory illnesses, except for the new COVID-19. They're not quite there yet, but it's almost there. And it turned out that I had something called human metanumovirus, which is similar to RSV, but does tend to affect some people very seriously. And we're actually seeing that um, a good number of people around the country, when they're getting severe respiratory illness now and over the last month, if they were checked, they did have human metanumovirus. So it doesn't mean you can't have more than one thing, um, but if I didn't know that that's what I had, thinking back, I would have thought, wow, did I have COVID-19 a little bit early? So for patients that are currently asking me, did I have COVID-19, I'm telling them that we are working on blood tests to be able to check titers, and if you have had the disease in the past, whether you were asymptomatic or symptomatic. It's not yet ready for prime time. However, I anticipate that this coming summer, we will be able to send patients to the lab to get their blood checked. So that's something you can stay tuned and wait for. In the meantime, you need to act like you're susceptible and that everybody around you has it and that you have it as well to keep everyone safe. Number five, is there any treatment working for COVID-19? So there's a lot of medications that have been touted in the media, and I have to let you know that there are some really interesting and really good clinical trials going on right now with certain medications. Many of you have heard about um, hydroxyquinolone, also known as Plaquenil, which is an anti-malarial medication. Now, it's not a magic bullet. If you look at the early data, you can see that. However, in some cases, it might decrease symptoms and keep you from getting severely ill, but we don't know yet the exact dose. We don't know yet the, the best time to give that. And right now, because so many people have asked for it, the pharmacies are all out. It's on back order. And right now, the country is waiting a few more weeks for the final data to be um, revealed. And then if it does show to be working, all the drug manufacturers will be mass producing it so that way we could use it for everybody. But again, it's not a magic cure. Some people are also recommending Zithromax in combination. Zithromax is an antibiotic that we often use for bronchitis and pneumonias, but it has some antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties. So again, this is something that we're learning more about and maybe will be recommended in the future. But right now you should not be taking any medication without a prescription from your own doctor because there is still so much we don't know, but we are learning more every day. And the last question from the weekend, I tested positive for COVID-19 and feel better when can I be around my family? So this is a question that we are seeing because we now, everybody now knows people who had COVID-19 in your community, um, from your school, um, from my practice, although nobody that I've been in contact with um, and nobody that's been in my office, thankfully. So the rules that we're using right now for if you are a known positive COVID-19 person or if you think you have it based on your symptoms, but you haven't been able to get tested. The recommendations are that you stay home, isolate, and not have any contact with anyone else until at least three days after your fever is completely gone without any fever-reducing medication, and your symptoms are gone. So that means no more cough, no more runny nose, no more feeling achy and yucky. And also at least seven days since you first 
began having symptoms. So this essentially means that if you get sick or have COVID-19, you must be home for at least a week, if not longer, and in most cases, two weeks, to know that you cannot transmit germs to anybody else. But even when you feel better and you can come out of that room of isolation, it doesn't mean that you have free reign around the house to hang out and enjoy meals with everyone. It means that you still must be very careful, but that you can be in the same room as your family members while being extremely cautious. So again, just to review, washing your hands is the most important way to keep healthy because that's how the disease is mostly transmitted, by touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, keep your face clean and be aware of how often you touch your face during the day and try to decrease that. That's one of the most important things that we can actually learn from this entire experience is good hygiene, which will help in future winters when we're protecting ourselves against other cold and flu viruses. Also, call your own doctor if you have any questions. And if you have symptoms of trouble breathing, shortness of breath, so you get up to do something and you have to sit back down because you feel short of breath and you can't breathe, that means you need to seek medical care and be examined by a doctor, but always call first. Also, if you have an ongoing fever of more than three, four, or five days, if you can't keep down liquids or you feel really sick, please call your medical provider because people can get very sick very quickly with this illness. And typically, you, most symptoms start to come out around two, three, four, five days after being exposed to somebody, and you initially feel sick for a few days, you might start feeling better, and often it's around that day five to seven to nine that things can get worse. And that's when we really want to make sure that those who need it get the medical attention that they need because this can be life-saving. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Dr. Tanya. If you like this, please subscribe. Please share with your friends. Please follow me on social media at Dr. Tanya Allman and ask me more questions so I can come back next Tuesday and answer them and help keep your family safe and healthy.